What's going on everyone? Raptor Rising. <clears throat> Today I wanted to go through my settings. I get asked this question quite a bit about my graphics settings. So I figured I would walk through them with you guys and show you rather than trying to explain it over and over. So let's put this a little bit lower. Yeah, there we go. Audio settings, nothing crazy here. Here, like in helmet, G breath effects, subtitles, voice chat, AI radio speech, turn servers for voice chat, all fine. Microphone, GUI world, in cockpit, helmet, all set to 100. Uh, first off, let's start with the VR tab. Have it enabled. Pixel density is set to 1 with the mouse selected, built-in audio device. The VR mirror options, this is how I get my videos to cut so cleanly. I use a DCS system resolution. My mirror eye source is my right eye, which is why when you watch my videos, there's always a slight tilt bias uh, to the right, and I have it cropped to a rectangle. Don't really use any of the hand controls, not really interested in any of that stuff. Moving on the system. When I play in pancake mode, I do play in 4K. And that is what the videos get recorded in and uh, how DCS crops stuff. So it's all set to 4K. <coughs> Cockpit displays 1024 resolution every frame. DLSS set to quality mode. There's a little bit of ghosting, but it looks pretty good. So I don't really have too many concerns with it. My sharpening is set to 0.75. I have textures, terrain textures, shadows, basically all this stuff set to the highest uh, possible settings. Civilian traffic set to low. It's really whatever you want that to be set as. I know some campaigns actually tell you to turn it off completely. It's whatever. Clouds to ultra, otherwise we don't get the full benefit of them. Water to high. SSAO to on. Now I've heard that that necessarily doesn't, uh, might not necessarily work with the anti aliasing. I don't care, I just leave it on. SSLR, uh, that one's set to off because that is a performance killing setting and there's really no benefit to it. Lens effects, dirt and flare, low heat blur, motion blur off, that's ridiculous. Um, don't need that, it's a waste of time. Depth of fill to bokeh. Uh, and color grading to teal and orange 3. The cool thing about the color grading options is you can do this live in game. You don't have to like get out of a mission. You can play with these um, as you go through and see what looks best to you. I found teal and orange 3 looks the best for me. Most of these slider settings here about halfway except for preload radius I have that maxed um, and then max FPS just cranked. Anisotropic filtering set to 16x, default shadows, global cockpit illumination on, and then all this fun stuff, rain droplets. I'm going to move that up to high, actually. Um, I'm not sure why that was set to low. There you go. Those are the graphical settings in a nutshell. Now what I want to do is let's go ahead and get into a busy mission. All right, we are here at Camp Bastion. Loaded into a very heavy uh, mission uh, that I created. Actually, it's more of a template, um, as most of my missions in Afghanistan have been set up on something like this. There's a lot going on. We've got a lot of AI assets doing a lot of stuff. And <clears throat> I, this is a great type of mission that you could test your, your virtual reality settings on, or DCS settings in general, because what you want to do is kind of prepare for the worst of times so that when you're playing at the best of times it's even better uh, so um, you know I use the reverb g2 and I think other windows type headsets um, windows mixed reality based headsets have access to open XR I'm not sure about headsets like the quest um, which is pretty popular but uh, if you do have access to it I would highly recommend using open XR to further refine your tweaks. So we've got 
OpenXR up on the screen. And what I want to do is we'll show off our FPS. Right now I am averaging between 45 and 50, uh, which is damn near, for me is, is damn near perfect. It's very, very good. Uh, you're gonna have to uh, tweak this to balance between what is acceptable and what is not. Uh, that, and that's entirely personal because you know, 45 FPS for me may be unplayable for you. It's really your call. So if you need to tweak that any, you go down here and look at your upscaling and sharpening. Now we already have DLSS and you can probably play with that a little bit, but the ghosting becomes really crappy. Uh, if you select a tool like NIS or FSR uh, here on the upscaling and sharpening section, you can change your screen resolution here. Now, 80 to 85% I've seen recommended pretty frequently. I'm playing with it at full resolution. Um, it looks better to me, obviously. Uh, that's a huge dip uh, in pixels. That's 500 less pixels, basically, on uh, size if you go from full resolution with a Reverb G2 to just 80%. It's still very high resolution, so it's important to keep in mind when you are using virtual reality that you are basically rendering two different screens right in front of your face, and you're asking a lot of your GPU to do that, with, especially with a game like DCS, which is resource intensive, pushing very high textures through two different screens. It's a lot. So be realistic with your settings. You're not going to get some crazy intense, awesome frame rate if you're running a 2060. Uh, I have a 3090, and the beautiful thing about the 3090 and why I still have a 3090 is that it has 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X RAM, and that RAM is incredibly powerful, very potent. And works really well. I'm skipping the 4000 series because this suits my needs quite well. I will probably be an early adopter of the 5000 series, specifically the 5090, which we are looking at 32 gigabytes of um, GDDR7 RAM, and that's going to be even better for pushing these high res textures. So you've got to really balance. What, you fit, what your physical limitations are in, um, in what you have in your system and what's an acceptable frame rate to you. Like I said, it's incredibly subjective and you've got to play with it. It took me probably a month or two to tweak and I'm finally at a place I feel really good about. Whichever mission you select, to do your um, frame rate baselines on, make sure you select a mission that's got a lot going on, and then at, at the very least a resource intensive aircraft, Apache, F-14 Tomcat, F-4 Phantom, something that's really gonna test your system. Because again, you wanna get a good baseline for where it's gonna be when it's having a hard time so that your tweaks give you an acceptable frame rate there and when you're playing in a good situation you have even better frame rate and it won't affect you as much you won't even notice it You guys have all enjoyed found this video helpful if you have please consider liking help me beat the youtube algor algorithm we really greatly appreciate any support there 
If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. We have a lot of flight sim based content, um, do some shooter stuff, uh, tactical things, a lot of fun. Try to keep it chill, just have a good time playing games. And I'd appreciate you guys joining the community. And that's gonna be it for me. If you guys have enjoyed the tweaks and settings video, let me know if you guys have any other questions. I'll be happy to try to help you out as best I can. This has been Raptor Rising, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.